The first time I came to Sarajevo, I was 19 years old, and it was 1979. And I was backpacking in Europe, and I was interested in Yugoslavia as a different kind of country. And I wanted to see it. And I, I'm from Scotland, and one of my, my oldest boyhood friends and I said, why don't we go and stand in the place where Princip shot Franz Ferdinand? Let's go and do that, that would be cool. And so we got on a train in Scotland, and we came all the way to Sarajevo in, the, in, this, in 1979. Tito was still alive. It was still Tito's Yugoslavia. And that was the first time I came, and I, on, and I wanted to see this historic place. And the first time I came in the war to Sarajevo was June of 1992. I'd been in Croatia in 1991, and in northern Bosnia in May, April and May of 92. And, but I got into Sarajevo in June, before the airport opened. And uh, everybody was hungry, there was no food. There was no food in the city. And I remember that I brought some food in with me to, for myself, but within a couple of days I'd, I'd given it all away to people who were hungrier than me. And I was here for about three weeks and I lost six kilos of weight in three weeks, but then everybody did. There were no fat people in the summer of 1992 in Sarajevo. And, um, and I was here when the airport opened and this, the humanitarian air bridge started. Um, so that was my first experience of wartime Sarajevo. And then I just kept coming back. It's all, I only, I, you know, I say, I, I was sent to Yugoslavia for two weeks in the summer of 1991. And I stayed for four years. So I just kept coming back again and again. And I'd stay, typically stay three or four weeks and go out and have some rest and then come back for three or four weeks, go out and, and that's what we did. Uh, what were the conditions uh, for work uh, for the journalist, for the war reporter in Sarajevo in that time? Can you describe us a little bit a typical day of, of the war reporter, if there is something like, uh, typical? Uh, yeah, well, there is no typical day, but I'll tell you what, what it was like for me. I, we stayed in the Delegates Club, which became the UN General's Headquarters, up there um, on Jure Djakovic Street. I don't even know whether it's still called that. But that's what it was called then. And there were maybe 50 journalists living in this big house. There was no electricity, of course, but there were a couple of phone lines worked. We didn't have mobile phones. I didn't even have a satellite phone. Um, so we would go out every day. There was a cafe in Bashchashia Square, which was still open. And we, I would go into this co co cafe and drink a cup of strong black coffee. And that would start my day. And then I'd just go around talking to people, trying to find out what's happening, going to the front lines trying to find out who was in charge, trying to find out where was safe, where were, how were people surviving, how did people have food, and just getting as much information as we could. But filing was difficult because you had to find a phone line that worked. The Associated Press had set up a good office in a building quite near there, and I used their facilities. They had a satellite phone at that time. It, things changed when this place opened, when the, when the Holiday Inn opened again and we all moved in here. It became much more workable uh, and we all set up bases we had a we had a room on this side looking west looking out to Mount Digman and uh, there was a sniper over there who could fire parallel to our window and we sometimes thought he was playing but he couldn't shoot in because he couldn't get the angle so he would, we would hear these bullets every now and again whizzing past the window and sometimes you know glancing off the wall of the building but you just got used to it it's just how you lived. And, uh, and this became a very workable base from which to, to operate. Um, you said you've met a lot of uh, citizens of Sarajevo every day. Uh, did you feel privileged as a journalist in that wartime? I remember being treated with great respect by the Sarajevo people. They were unbelievably helpful. And willing, I was. I was. I would often come away from an interview with somebody and think, God, how can that person have spent time talking to me? Why was it important for them? Uh, would I have done the same thing if I was them? If some foreign journalist who can swan in and out wanted to come and talk to me when I was grieving the death of one of my family, or trying hard to stay alive, or trying to make a trying to make sense of why somebody fired a rocket through my sitting room window. But people were very kind to us, actually. And I think they wanted their story told. I think people in Sarajevo wanted the world to know about 
what was going on here. Um, and, and they also, quite often people would say to us, you're here with us. So, of course we treat you with decency and respect. But no, I always felt very welcome here. So yes, it was privileged. Uh, what was the most difficult, most horrific moment uh, in when reporting from a war in Bosnia? I lost a colleague. A colleague of mine was killed uh, and I'd been working with him until about 20 minutes before it happened. And we'd separated. Uh, I had to go back to, it was in central Bosnia, I had to go back to the coast, back to Split. We had an office in Split because I had some tapes I needed to edit and transmit the material. And, and he stayed. He And, and he was ki killed 20 minutes later. And that was very hard. That was... You know, I think about it even now, it was 20 years ago. And um, so, yeah, I mean, he was one of more than 100,000 who died. And I think of that, how, how that story, how that incident affected me personally. When people walking around this city have much worse things. Uh, so that was, for me, that was the hardest thing, coping with the loss of somebody so close. When, because you you ask yourself questions, could I have done something? Could I have? What should I have done to make sure it didn't happen? Uh, and you, but everybody in this city knows that. Everybody in this city understands what it's like. I'm sure. Um, have you been in a situation to apply self censorship on some of your reports, uh, or have you been in a situation that your media house also uh, censors uh, censor um, reports that you send from Bosnia? Not really. You have to operate under certain rules. You have to be fair. Fairness is very important in in um, fairness is very important in in the way I so. so but no, I, I I don't think it was ever necessary to censor anything. To to in the sense of knowing something to be true and deliberately not reporting it. No, no. I don't think there was never any, and there was also never any attempt by the authorities here to control what we saw or what we uh, reported, uh, not, not on this side anyway. It was more difficult in Republika Srpska uh, operating with freedom and quite often we, uh, we couldn't go anywhere without uh, a government minder given to us by the government press office over in Pali. If you wanted, for example, to travel up to the north of Bosnia to somewhere like uh, Banja Luka, quite often, not always, but sometimes you had to take somebody that they gave you because you, you couldn't get through the checkpoints without it. We never had that. Pro we never worked under those kind of restrictions here, on this side. We were pretty much free. Uh, do you find uh, reporting from war in Bosnia objective? International media. Reporting? Yeah, I think the most, for the most part, the international media was objective. But what do you mean by objective? Do you mean treating all sides as though they're equally guilty? I don't think we did that. I hope we didn't do that. I mean, by objectivity, I think you, what you do is to be objective is you, you apply the same standards of critical scrutiny to all sides. And I think we tried to do that. I mean, we were, as you know, we were widely perceived to be anti-Serb. I don't think we were anti-Serb. We, we told the story of what was going on here. And I don't think it was... I, I don't think... It, I, to this day, absolutely would argue that we were not anti-Serb we were telling the story of the war. Uh, do you believe that me media attention uh, on war in Bosnia was a crucial factor for uh, war, uh, NATO intervention in 95? I think it probably was part of what changed public opinion in, in the democ Western democracies. But really what changed it was Srebrenica. Srebrenica was what changed it. Um, and I think what was happening is that the foot soldiers of the so-called ethnic cleansing had got into a culture in which they could get away with it. There was a real culture of impunity uh, and Srebrenica was too far. And with Srebrenica they pushed the Western democracies too far and that was what tipped it. That was what tipped it. Um. 
After Sarajevo, uh, you probably went to other war zones, uh, conflict zones. Can you compare Sarajevo and Bosnia war with those uh, that happened later? And can you find something typical, specific for Bosnian war? I mean, I've reported from a lot of wars. I can only speak for myself. This one I stayed with for longer and committed myself to more fully than any other. Uh, so this was a very defining experience for a lot of us. And it shaped us and we kind of grew up here. A lot of us came here quite young and inexperienced because the more experienced guys in our newsrooms were in the Middle East and doing Iraq and the aftermath of the Iraq war in 1991 and, and the Israel-Palestine. Those were the big stories of, of the day in the late 80s and early 90s. So when, when trouble started in Yugoslavia, nobody, I think foreign news desks didn't expect it to be very big. They thought it was it's Europe, it'll all be sorted out. And so the, some of the junior guys got, got to have a go. And I was one of those. And by the time it became big, we were the ones who had been here a lot and we knew it. And so we, they, so we kind of grew up here as correspondents. We grew up and, and, and learned not only about former Yugoslavia, but about our trade and our business. And so yeah, it was a, for me it was a part of growing up.